sometimes the second time is always the best time. <laughs> Hey guys, so this is my review for X-Men 2. Now, or called X2, as they did a lot on the posters. Now this is probably, if not one of the best, the best X-Men films of the entire series. I'd say it ranks up there with First Class and Days of Futures Past. But really, I would say that First Class and this film are my favorite films of the entire X-Men series. There was so much a development from the first film in the second film the entire arc with Jean Grey was so well done the love triangle between Cyclops Wolverine and Jean Grey was actually really well done it wasn't stupid admittedly Cyclops is still a little bit of a pansy but I actually think they did a really good job with this film the one thing that I find very funny is that this film spawned one of the worst X-Men video games in history, if I'm correct, which was X-Men 2 Wolverine Origins, or Origins or something, I don't know, it was mainly about how Wolverine became about, and then the worst movie in the X-Men series spawns one of the best comic book games of all time. I've been playing this the last few days, and holy crap. I played it for a week once, and it's still one of my favorite video games of all time. So X-Men 2, what made it so good? Well, the entire arc of every character. The idea that Wolverine was trying to figure out who he was, and even though he was afraid of the person who caused all this pain that took away his memories and turned him into a monster, sort of, he still is drawn to him because he wants to know. The whole idea that uh, Magneto is being tortured by uh, by, by Stryker to figure out and how to capture all the mutants at Xavier's place. The opening with Nightcrawler is still one of the... It is, okay, you know, everyone talks about how Quicksilver scene in Days of Futures Past was really good. No, no. In my opinion, single awesome one character moment of super coolness is still the White House scene at the beginning of X-Men 2. That scene was so well done and at the time the effects were so good and they're still really good and it blew everyone's freaking mind seeing Nightcrawler do that. And then to see them all come together at Alkali Lake at the end of the film, have the interactions, that fight with the Night, whatever her name was, long ass nails, which again that doesn't, it doesn't really explain how she has the nails because in other sayings, they say that Wolverine was the only one who could survive the antimantium process, so I don't know how... It doesn't really make sense with her, but either way, Stryker Brian Cox is a fantastic actor. He's on the same caliber of Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart. So to see three absolute powerhouse British actors in this film was fantastic to watch. The... Uh, Mystique was also really cool too. I liked how she was kind of villainous, but not so much. It was more so that they had to work together uh, when they go to Bobby's house and seeing that fear that his own, his own family tries to turn him in. That was so well done. That was really a deep sort of moment for the film to show that there was still the segregation, this fear, even of your own family. And then the ending, the ending with Jean Grey and the water, and I was like, holy crap, that was so cool. And when I was a kid, I remember thinking, wow, that was epic. And then when you see the phoenix rise from the water, I didn't really know the full extent of it, but I had seen the phoenix episode of the animated series. <laughs> I still love that theme song. Either way, admittedly, that arc was completely ruined by Brett Ratner, but... Every aspect of X-Men 2 is so well done. The fight scene at the at the mansion, Wolverine's search and journey for his own ideal his own I identity, the whole aspect of uh, <laughs> Xavier being used as a weapon and showing the full extent of how bad uh, technically how much power he had. He almost killed the entire human race before he almost killed the entire mutant race. So, and then that ending at the White House, you kind of wonder, well, Xavier's saying, you know, there's a war coming. He's like, well, bro, you caused it technically with Cerebro and everything. That, so, I really, really wanted to see what Brian Singer would have done with X-Men 3. I wanted to see not only the whole, a much better, uh, a much better Phoenix arc, but also just what were the impl impl implications of what happened with 
the entire, almost all of the humans dying. Sure, they have the cure thing in the third film, but I really wanted to see what Singer would have done with that. To me, this film is near on flawless. I can't think of an issue that's wrong with it. If there is, there's a little note in the cranny because this film is fantastic. So in the end, I'm gonna give X-Men 2 a seven out of seven. It is a phenomenal movie. It still stands up. Singer knocked it out of the park. This, while the first film was the pinnacle of, of uh, comic book movies, this one showed how good they could be. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. X-Men, oh, The Last Stand is coming up next. At least it's not Wolverine Origins.